Water is very fascinating and beautiful, but it's also very hard to simulate. It contains millions and millions of particles and takes ages to bake. But what if we could make a material that acts and behaves like water? Well, that's possible now because in this video, we'll make a perfect water shader, which will mostly be procedural and customizable. It even updates the foam in real time and it also generates real time caustics. You can even create a big ocean with it. In the first chapter, we'll make the base shader and optimize it. After that, we'll add some details and animate them. In the third chapter, we'll go through caustics. After that, we'll add big waves with displacement to achieve something like an ocean. And in the final chapter, we'll add foam that reacts with objects around it. You'll also get some free assets along the way, so make sure to watch till the end. Let's start by making the base shader. Don't get confused by this custom layout. I have my shader editor on the left side and my viewport on the right side, along with the properties tab. By the way, all of the shortcuts and clicks I perform will be shown here. Before starting, go into Edit, Preferences, Add-ons and search for Node Wrangler. Enable it and save preferences. We will use it for the shortcuts. Create a new material and name it. I'm going to go with water for now. You'll notice two new nodes will appear. The material output is like an output node. Whatever is connected to it will be projected onto your mesh. Then you have the principled BSDF. This is the main node, which has many controls like color, roughness, alpha, and more. The first thing we have to do to achieve something like water is to make a translucent material. To do that, decrease the roughness to get something glossy. This is reflective, but water also refracts light. If we take a look at the main node, we will find a hidden option called transmission. Increase that to one, and you will immediately notice the change. Let's set it to 0.985 just to add some subtle effect. Now that it refracts light, we also have to make sure it refracts it correctly. And it's pretty simple to change in Blender. You just have to add the water IOR, which is 1.333, and it will refract correctly. Now, of course, it's a subtle effect, but these effects matter in the final render. Refraction does cost some computational power, but we can optimize it. Add a mix shader and plug it after the principled BSDF. Add a transparent shader as well, and connect it into the second socket. Now the general idea is, we want to show the main node, but we want the light to pass through the transparent shader. It's pretty simple to do. Add a light path node, take the shadow ray and connect it into the factor. Make sure the transparent shader is in the second slot. This water is very clear, so let's add some depth to it. Add a volume absorption node and connect it into the volume socket. Set the color to something like blue or green. High density will give you more depth. I like to go with 0.3, which gives a subtle effect, but for now, I'm going to set it to 1, which is the default. This already looks great. Water has small random bumps, which can be easily recreated in Blender with a noise texture. Add a noise texture and place it behind the main node. If you click on it while pressing Ctrl and Shift, a preview of the node will appear. This is possible because of the Node Wrangler add-on we enabled earlier. There is one more useful shortcut that Node Wrangler offers, which is Control plus T. It will add a mapping and texture coordinate node. Now, since we want something reliable and consistent, I have tested many settings for this shader, and I have found the perfect values. To make sure every object follows the same scale, we have to use the object coordinates. What this does is that when you apply the scale of your mesh, it will automatically fit back and it will always give the exact and the scale, no matter how big or small your mesh is. This is very useful, and you just have to connect the object coordinates instead of UV. Also, change the mapping scale to 0.5. It just gives the correct scale. Now let's start with the first layer. Set the scale to 2. Increase the detail to its maximum value. Increase the roughness to its maximum value as well. Make sure lacunarity is set to 0, and set the distortion to 0.25. Now that we have made a texture, we need to displace the mesh according to it. The easiest and most efficient way is to use a bump node. Connect it to the normal and take the factor of the noise texture and connect it into the height of the bump node. You can control the strength 
but the default is great. But why stop here? Let's add some more subtle details. Add another noise texture and connect the mapping node into the vector. For this noise texture, set the size to 15. Increase the detail to its max. Make sure the roughness is set to 0.5 and lacunarity is set to 2. Increase the distortion to 0.25 just to add some subtle effect. Now to add these two noise setups, we are going to use a mix color node. Make sure the first noise texture setup is connected into the first socket and the small detailed one into the second socket. This factor value will decide which setup will appear. If it is zero, the first socket will appear. And if it is one, the second socket will appear. Since we want the second noise setup to be very subtle, we are going to use a very low value, like 0.03. This value seems very low, but the details are visible in the final render. Now that we are done with the details, let's animate it before moving to the next chapter. To be able to animate it, we will need to first switch the noise texture to 4D. This will give us a W value which mostly works like a seed, but it transitions very smoothly. Now there are a lot of ways to animate this, but I like to keyframe this value. Matter of fact, let's add a value node and connect it into the W socket. If you hold shift and drag your mouse while pressing right click, you will create a point. This comes in handy to organize nodes. Now open a timeline and go to the first frame. Right click the value node and add a keyframe. You can also use the shortcut as well. Go to the second frame, change the value to one and add another keyframe. Now while your mouse is on the timeline, Press T and select Linear. This will make sure that the keyframes have no delay. To make this go infinite, press Shift plus E and select Linear Extrapolation. Make sure the value node is selected or otherwise it won't work. We are now done with the timeline. Make sure to go into the Material Preview to check the animation speed. You might need to disconnect the Volume Absorption node because it doesn't work correctly in the Material Preview. To play with the animation speed, add a math node and place it after the value node. Change it to multiply and decrease the value. A value like 0.002 or 0.005 will work great, but it is up to you. Now, if you are not a beginner, this tip is for you. You can also use a wave texture on top of the noise and animate the X or Y axis in the same manner. This will give a more directional animation, but it is completely optional. Caustics are the best part of this shader, and I think this has never been done before with any water shader. Fun fact, I actually found it by mistake. So the trick is to manipulate the color of the transparent shader. When it is set to black, no light will pass through our mesh, and this gives us the perfect opportunity to use textures. We just need a water caustic texture. It's pretty simple to create procedural caustics in Blender with a Voronoi texture. Credits to this guy who made it originally. You can find his video link in the description. Add a Voronoi texture, and if you preview it, you will notice that its pattern represents something like caustics. I already know the best settings, so first set this to 4D, Change this to Smooth F1. Set the smoothness to 0.4 and randomness to 0.9. The main trick to take these caustics to the next level is to duplicate it and mix it with a mix color node. You have to change the mode to Difference and make sure the factor is set to 1. Since we are subtracting both similar textures, we will get nothing. To fix this, change the smoothness of the second Voronoi texture to 0.2. One more thing, duplicate the mapping and texture coordinate we made earlier and connect it into the vector of the Voronoi texture. Make sure the normalize box is also unchecked for both textures. It would be great if we use a value node to control the scale for both textures. 
animating it is very simple. Just use the same value in math node and connect it into the W value of both textures. Set the multiplication value to 0.01. Again, you can play with the speed if you want to. Add a color ramp and change the mode to B-spline. Adjust the color ramp until you get something soft. Just copy my settings and you'll be fine. Add another color ramp and adjust it as well. This color ramp will work like a contrast slider. Connect it into the color of the transparent shader and you're good to go. Let's add some color as well. Add a mix color node and connect it after the color ramp. Set this to multiply and increase the strength to one. Now search for RGB, which will get you this color wheel. Connect it into the second slot. Connect it into the color of the principled node as well. Now when you change the water color, the caustic color will change as well. This is pretty much it. You can see that this pool also creates beautiful caustics with the shader. Even though Blender has caustics, it's slow. And since we are going for something that behaves and acts like water, why not recreate the caustics as well? We can also make a big ocean with big waves using the ocean modifier, but the problem is that it requires too much geometry. And your PC will definitely divorce you. So to prevent that, we're going to use the oldest trick in the book which is to use displacement with adaptive subdivision. This can generate an ocean up to eight kilometers. That's the most I tried. I think you can go further than that. Anyways, credits to this guy who made this first. It is outdated, but he pretty much explained the basics in a great way. And if you remember, I said that this shader will mostly be procedural. This is because we are going to bake the ocean modifier. You don't have to create or use any ocean modifier. Just head to my Patreon and get this free ocean bake file. If you open it, you will find both the base and detailed ocean. You have to bake both of these and it will bake in the same directory. You can change the frame range, but know that 120 frames will take up to eight gigabytes. Now that your bake is ready, let's change some settings before we go into the shader editor. First, add an empty and rename it to ocean. Go into the render tab and switch to experimental mode. Go down and you will find the subdivision tab. Open that and change the dicing rate to two, change the off-screen scale to eight, and max subdivisions to 16. If you go further down, you will find persistent data. Make sure it's unchecked, because displacement needs to be calculated again and again to work correctly. Now select your mesh and go into the modifiers tab. Add two subdivision modifiers and switch the second one to adaptive. Now we can go into the shader editor, add an image sequence and select all of the base bake files. Make sure the sorting is set by naming. Check both of these so it is animated. Add a texture coordinate and mapping node. Connect object coordinates and select the empty we created. Apply scale with control plus A. Make sure you copy these values to get accurate scaling. Now the most important thing you have to change the mapping type to texture, or otherwise it won't work. Now add a separate color, combine color, and a vector displacement node. This is not the normal displacement node, so don't get confused. Connect it, and make sure you switch up the green and blue values. Connect the vector displacement into the displacement, and you are done with the first layer. You also have to enable displacement, along with bump in the material settings. Let's add the second bake. Add another image sequence and select the second bake. Duplicate the mapping and texture coordinate node and connect it into the vector. You will need to change these values for accurate scaling.
add a mix color and add the details in the second slot. Switch the mode to linear light. Value of 0.5 is enough, but you can increase it for more detail. Just make sure to apply scale wherever you scale your mesh, and it will be better if you only use a plane for the ocean to avoid glitches. One more thing, you can skip it if you want. Since big oceans have some variation in their roughness, let's create that as well. Add a noise texture and connect it into the roughness of the principled node. Use a color ramp with a dark white value to create some subtle effect. These settings are all yours to try. One more thing, this ocean displacement will look ugly from close so it is better to not use it for close-up shots. And if you want a high resolution, just increase the render resolution and bake it. It will take more time and space, but it will give good quality. Note that this method is only for big planes. Don't use it if you are just creating a pool or something. Foam is easier than it seems. Let's create a noise pattern first. Set the scale to 20. Increase the detail to its maximum increase the roughness to 0.75 and increase the distortion to 0.25. Use the same mapping node that we used for small waves. Add a color ramp and invert it. Tweak it until you get something like this. We need more details, so let's just duplicate this noise texture and decrease its size to 15. Add a mix color node to mix both of these textures. Now we need a mask which tells where an object will interact with our water. Add an ambient occlusion node and add an invert node. Now you have to experiment with the inside checkbox and the distance value to get what you want. For this case, I will check the box and set the distance to 0.3. Let's use this as a mask. Add a mix color and set it to multiply. Connect the noise mask in the first socket and the ambient occlusion in the second socket. Make sure the factor is set to one. Now before we make the foam shader, let's first create one more layer, duplicate the ambient occlusion and invert node. Decrease the distance a bit. Add a mix color node and set the mode to screen. Decrease the factor a little bit and you are pretty much done with the mask. Let's create the foam shader, add a principled shader, and decrease the roughness. Connect the same bump map into the normal. Add a mix shader and place it after the main water shader. Connect the second principled into the second slot and connect the foam mask we created into the factor. We can make the foam a little better with subsurface scattering, but it will increase some render time Increase the weight to 0.75, set the radius to 1 for all values. Increase the scale to 2 meters, and you are good to go. Let me tell you one more thing before we end the video. You can add one more layer to the foam mask, duplicate the noise texture and the color ramp. Instead of multiplying it with the ambient occlusion, use a foam texture. You can easily bake that with the ocean modifier that I provided earlier. I am just going to use a single frame of the detailed ocean. You have to check foam to make it work. Use the same mapping and coordinates that we made for the big detailed waves. Just multiply it with the noise texture. You will need to adjust it with a color ramp to get good results. Use a mix color and connect the original foam mask. Change the mode to add and you are good to go. Thanks for watching till the end, and if you want this final node material, check out my Patreon. You will also find my project files on my Patreon as well.